In a sense, we sing a new song. One time I was going through and I was just going through so much and I just, like God, I can't take no more. I just felt like giving up and try to take my life. I mean, I'm, I was tired, but somebody say, but God, hallelujah. See, God had a plan for my life, hallelujah. This song is just simply a worship song and it's entitled, We Sing a New Song. Wabi Sabi Productions Incorporated is a 501c3 non-for-profit corporation. Our mission statement is to sponsor and produce experimental theater, video, and events that address health, political, and socioeconomic issues affecting historically underserved individuals, cultures, minorities, and communities. Through artistic and cultural programming, we build and strengthen communities, develop future leaders, promote human development, and create opportunities for youth and adult artists of all disciplines. Well, welcome to Joshua's House for Christian Artists. I'm your host, Apostle Dr. Lois Sayers Gibson, better known as SMR, up here in the treasure state of Montana. Hallelujah! It is cold up in here, up in here. And when I tell you it's a minus 20 degrees below zero, come on, somebody. Thank God. <laughs> Thank God for what I do have. I'm warm enough. You see, I had to throw a shawl on, but we bless the Lord. I want to thank my guests for coming on and considering it not robbery to bless us, Tremaine Graham. And I'm going to have him introduce himself to you before I go through the songs that I selected. You know, he has quite a bit out, but it was certain ones that the Lord said, mm hmm, mm hmm, that was really hitting. And I know Tremaine through. Two of my spiritual sons, Apostle Joshua Wingate and Elder Sherrod Allen. And if y'all notice, I've had their, they've been on the show too. And this is how God has designed these divine hookups and connections. And I'm excited because I don't have to do the work. As the Holy Spirit leads me who to bring on, I'm good. I just create the videos and the flyers. That works for me. So anyway, uh, let me introduce him now an anointed man of God who has some awesome testimonies. And that's what these songs are about to tell the testimonies. Amen. So Tremaine, tell the people about you. I mean, that being looking sharp. Oh, I just took a oh, bit of that you know, I had to hook a little bit, you know, hook it up just a little <laughs> Listen, bit. Before one, I came of the, on. one of the <laughs> things that I say, a man that got that beard tight and grew <laughs> is sexy. That's keeping 100. Cause that's yeah. probably, that's yeah. part of that G, GQ grooming. You know, yeah, there's, there's a lot of men out there. They got beers and everything else, but okay. But when you take that time to fine tune it at that yeah. time, and I can match <laughs> you with a hat on tilt to the side of that cool <laughs> <laughs> And then you, know, uh, you got the little touch of silver in there. Like I was yeah. telling uh, Sherrod, I said, man, listen, I've been watching the Silver Fox. They are the GQ. Now. They are. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell our listeners about you, Tremaine. Well, well, hello everybody. I'm Tremaine Graham. Um, from North Carolina, North Carolina, but I reside in Dallas, Texas now. Um, I'm just a simple country boy who loved God. I um, I grew up singing all my life. And so singing is what I know. Ministry is what I know. Um, I love people. I have a heart for people. And, um, and if you can't minister to yourself first, you can't minister to nobody. So mm -hmm. I raised, uh, my mother, um, father raised me in ministry, raised me singing. I come from a singing family. Mm -hmm. They're amazing people. And I'm so proud to be a part of a wonderful family. Yeah, and I'm so glad that I got the opportunity to be on your show. I'm so excited about it. <laughs> excited too, you know, because we had been in reconstructions for seven years. So we used wow. to be on Blog Talk. And then, you wow. know, Blog Talk started going up and up and up with their prices. And I'm a ministry <laughs> that gets everything by prayer. And when, you know, a lot of people didn't want to continue to donate or whatever, the reality yeah. was it was just too much for me. You know what I mean? I, and and I, I was grateful that we just took a reconstruction because we had to figure out how to come back because yeah. one 
issues is I, my listeners must hear the quality of the music like how, how I hear it. Absolutely. And that's why I love um, this medium like this, because once I finish, I edit this and I drop the song in just how you put how you present it, the qualities. Because yeah. right? I've listened to some love. shows and the music doesn't come through quite well. And it's, and it's like mm -mm, yeah. we, we operate in excellence or we don't do it at all. That's right. Um, right. So we thank God for reconstruction and you too have gone through some reconstruction because I want to talk about your first song that I've found that ministered greatly. Like, uh, as far as I'm concerned, you need to make this a longer version because I have to keep it on repeat. And it's, and I want you to tell us the, the story behind a new song for a new season. Oh, wow. I, that was on my very first project I've ever done. Um, during that time I was going, I mean, my life was just all over the place at that moment. Um, I was the I was dealing with depression. I was dealing with suicide, and um, it was just a whole lot that I was dealing with. I was literally like the outcast, and I kept praying to God. And being young, you know, being young, it was I wanted to fit in, but I couldn't fit in. So it was something about me that was different, and so. I was getting angry for the fact that I couldn't do what everybody else do. And, mm. and um, then I was always talked about. I was always criticized. I mean, I, it was horrible. It was terrible. Mm. And so, and I remember one day um, the Lord gave me this song. He was like, he said, seasons change. He said, seasons do change. He said, and your life is getting ready to change. He said, but I need you to understand who you are, you know, as son of God, I need to understand, and you need to understand who I am, you know, and then all of a sudden the Lord was like, listen, just listen to the, listen to the seasons as they change. And I remember we was going from spring and it was going, then it was going, um, winter hit. And so I was watching how the leaves were falling. I was watching how things were changing. And the Lord was like, just that quickly, he said, I'm going to change your life. He said, but you have to build deal with the season as it comes yes it, it, sometimes the seasons may come fast you know sometimes they may it seems like you'll get hit hard early mm. in a season, like something like another season but he said but you have to trust the process of this season and so and then all of a sudden god gave me the song um we sing a new song because every time i went into a new season god gave me a new song mm. every um, and that song was to confirm the season that I came out of and that I was going into. In a sense, we sing a new song. One time I was going through and I was just going through so much and I just, like, God, I can't take no more. And I just felt like giving up and try to take my life. I mean, I'm, I was tired, but somebody say, but God, hallelujah. See, God had a plan for my life. Hallelujah. This song is just simply a worship song and it's entitled, We Sing a New Song. Just give him glory. 
God, we give you glory, God. We give you honor, Jesus. with you and since so much of this is happening even more so since the pandemic more people are, have been experiencing depression and suicide what helped you to come through that honestly it was the grace of god because even during this pandemic i don't care how saved you are mm -hmm. i don't care been in Christ, you know, um, we can be overcome by a lot of stuff, but the word of God stands for itself. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, dealing with depression, it was that I, I got back into my word and I started reading. And then outside of reading, I started finding strength that I never had. But the key about it though, was my prayer life. Mm -hmm. And as much as I'm, I'm a clown, I'm down to earth, but <laughs> <laughs> at the same time, I deal with the reality of depression, you know, because I went through it and don't think that the devil still don't try to tempt me Absolutely. with those. Things. And so depression does keep, um, keep up. It does creep up. And I have moments in my life where I'm like, Lord, I can't do this no more. But what helped me was the fact that I had to remember the foundation that I stood on mm -hmm. and that foundation that my grandmother stood on. I had to realize the rock that is in my life, you know, and that's Christ Jesus. So prayer really did it for me. Reading the word did it for me because it helped divert my mind. Amen. It took my mind off of those things. So that was a key thing for me. Amen. I too deal with depression. It, that he, He's still at that door trying to come in, but I thank yeah. God I have learned that when the shifting's going on, I automatically say, yo, what's this about Holy Ghost? That's right. Me, there's an attack from such and such, and this is what you need to do. And for me, how I deal with it, I throw on this worship music. Me, we go in. Yes, and you know what? Somewhere else. That's right. You got to find what works for you in the mm -hmm. spirit. The Christian, I guess, for Christians or even people that are not Christians, when you think about it, once you indulge in something, you know, um, mostly the Word of God or something that's going to help soothe that spirit, you know, um, it diverts that feeling, and that spirit has to go. Yes, the absolutely, absolutely, uh, and I thank God. I thank God for the fact that um, during the time that I got up here, up in this foreign, I call it Montana, living in a foreign land, it is really foreign here on everything. <laughs> and I thank God for God allowing me to, for Joshua to send me uh, the the videos and the songs when y'all first were starting his, on his yeah. so guards. Now I want to talk about um, how, what was your experience like singing with two of your friends? Let's first talk about it's all God. And with Joshua Wingate and Fab, what was that like? Let me tell I absolutely love my little brother. That's let me tell you something. <laughs> we have the best time together. That is my I mean, if God created someone in this earth to be a light to the world, it's Josh. You know, he's an amazing and anointed individual. And I love it because he's well balanced. Amen. You 
Alice, and that was an amazing experience for him to want his bigger brother, you know, to come and be a part of something that's monumental, you know, and I was completely honored to be, to do, you know, to be a part of it and to be there to celebrate that moment with him. And when he asked me to sing for him, there was no doubt I would do anything for my little brother. That's a <laughs> powerful song too. It is. It is amazing. He's, he's anointed like... <laughs> I don't, you know how some people just, you just don't have words to kind of express the type of person that they are. He's one of those individuals that I'm godly proud and I'm so godly proud of our connection. And um, I thank God for him. I really do. So my question to you is when you were singing that song, what was God revealing to you as you sang, sang that song, ministering to people? Well, my testimony is very broad, um, very broad. I look back, um, and the crazy thing, the word the lyric says, when I look back and see all the ways he made, it's all God. Mm -hmm. Well, um, the thing about it is, um, like I said, it was amazing when he gave me the song, I just went over the lyrics and the lyric says, when I look back and see how all the ways he's made, it's all God. Mm -hmm. And I look at my life because I was a victim of molestation um, multiple times when I was young. And before I could never talk about it, would never mm -hmm. talk about it. But now I realize it was nobody but the Lord that kept me yeah. through those moments. And not just that moment because, um, going forward out of my life, um, dealing with suicide and depression and trying to commit them, went through the acts and it didn't happen. Thank you, it was all God to yes. keep me. Then go from that to be paralyzed. And my God. I was paralyzed, yes. And couldn't, they said I wouldn't walk, but look at God. Yes, it's all God. God. It's all and God. Then, Satan had, he was upset because he couldn't get me then. So why not get him in the area that he uses the most? You couldn't get me in my body because I'm a praiser. Then when you realize that didn't work, then you attack my voice. And I went three years with a hole in my, in my throat. My God. And wouldn't be able to sing again. And they tried to teach me sign language. Once again, it's Ooh, all God. Jesus, hallelujah. What, what better yet, you know, what better song could my little brother ask for me to sing? And then that song mm -hmm. ministered to me. Mm -hmm. So I know God deals with me in healing. Mm -hmm. and, and when he gave me that song, I was like, God, you know, whatever comes out, allow it to be healing. Allow it, the same God that healed me, allow this to heal people when they hear the song. Amen. You know, so it was amazing. It's it's all God. It's all
did with Sherrod Allen to do Specialized. Because I'm telling you, I told you uh, <laughs> Specialized was my song. I got on that. I was like, yo, I rocked with that one. And I felt that. <laughs> And that was like, yeah, buddy. That was <laughs> it, how did you get to do that one? And, and what, how did it impact on you? Well, God specializes. Sherrod is, a, he's another amazing individual. Like, I'm blessed to come across these people, especially Sherrod. Sherrod is like, that's my, that's my bro right here for life. Um, Sherrod actually... We connected years ago, but never really met because Sherrod did some pieces. He designs. Yes. So he designed some stuff for my group back in the day. Okay. And not knowing one day we came across each other. And then ever since then, we just hit it off and we've been, you know, cool ever since. But um, Sherrod was um, asked, was well, doing a project and we was working on it. He said, I want you to lead a song I specializes. And the same thing with this song, God specializes in things that are impossible. <laughs> and it seems like these songs had such a connection with me because I'm a witness of it. Yes. I mean, I've seen him do the impossible in my yes. life from, I mean, from being stripped to nothing, laid on the side of the road to mm. die, to God live, lifting you up in the presence of your enemies and how God will heal you from, you know, from a place that is impossible. You know, he specializes yes. in all of these Hallelujah. things and that seems impossible. That's the key. It seems impossible, but he's a He's an amazing guy. And I'm just thankful that Sherrod asked me to be a part of his project as well. Hey. And that song is amazing. Yes, it is. <laughs> I specialize it. Romans 8 and 28 says, And we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God. God specializes in things. <laughs> Come on, choir. God specializes. God specializes. God specializes in things that's impossible. God. God specializes. Yeah. Come on. God specializes. You can do the impossible, y'all. Is this it? 
do it, y'all. Come on, he will do it. God has put people in our, in our lives to connect with because he told me specifically, yeah. hey, Lois, you know, all them people you met over the years, part of Joshua. Yeah. Then who the one I want you to do? He, I said, oh, that was wow. me. And look, here it is years later because God connected me with Joshua in 2009 when I was uh, in a homeless shelter. And wow. because I couldn't be with my child, my son, because a lot of a lot of stuff was going down. Yeah. Uh, gave me Joshua the loved one as a child. It's my oh, wow. We've been connected oh, wow. ever since. That, that, wow, that's that, beautiful. That, and I thank his mother for sharing him. <laughs> yes, I love her. She's yeah, beautiful. Listen, I call yeah. her pastor, Doctor Helen Wingate. That's it. <laughs> she is. I'm not paying the rest of the people no attention. Anyway, <laughs> let's talk about your song, "Brand New Mercies." Tell us about this. Yeah. Brand New Mercies is that's like. The love of my life okay. and <laughs> brand new mercy i mean not deserving that's it i'm i remember one day picking my mother up um from work and as we was going down the highway and the sun was shining it was so beautiful i heard birds singing and then all of a sudden the lord just said brand new mercy mm -hmm. you know i give you brand new mercies and since then and i'm a type of person that god deals with me both you know i could hear angels singing and mm -hmm. and i kept hearing this song but brand new mercy is something we do not deserve yeah, yeah. we don't deserve it we do not deserve it. we're not that wonderful and just to think that he gives it to us New mercies. We're at at eleven fifty nine at night, it runs out, but it starts yeah. over again. Oh, you know, yeah. and and I thank God for brand new mercies. So how did how did you uh, come up with this? This not just that. What was the whole thing going on with you that you came out with brand new mercies? What's your testimony besides you going down the road? There was something else going on with you. Yeah. <laughs> so brand new mercies. Oh. Um, even though, and truthfully, and this is a transparent moment. Yes. Truthfully, um, I want wonderful. I wasn't, listen, okay. I I was the type, <laughs> after God, did, you know, even during the type process of me trying to fit in with people, I was clubbing, I was going, I was drinking up something, and this is something a lot of people did not know about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I was all over the place, but, um, and then I just realized, and I remember we had um, church one night and the power of God really hit. And I would be going from the club and then I'll go straight to the church and try to sing the people in. But um, it was uh, for some reason about this one church night, this um, revival night, um, the Holy Spirit, it really hit. And and I remember the power of God came over and then he was like, um, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh. <laughs> and I don't know what. That did to me. When I heard that, I said, God, whatever you do, don't take your spirit away from me. And I was on the verge and I heard I heard the warning of God. Mm. And even though I heard the warning, I wrestled with it because I didn't, you know, I was still trying to do my own thing, you know. But I heard him clear as day. He was like, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh. <laughs> and I did not want the Lord to take yes, yes. his uh, hand off of my life. And that next day, and I was like, he was like, I give you brand new mercies. Morning by morning, I wake up with something new every single day. And it's because of, it's because of, it's because of who he is. No goodness of our own. It's because of who he is. He just decides to bless us with the breath of life, you know. So then brand new mercy that next day pick a mom up and that's that came what I'm up talking about. that's what i'm talking yeah. about the real deal yeah. testimony yeah. <laughs> the whole thing is it says my sheep know my voice and all yeah if you did not know the voice of god you will dismiss that but you absolutely saying, i knew it yeah. i knew hallelujah. it hallelujah yes. thank you I knew we're, it. Gonna, yeah. we're gonna play brand new mercies thank you you do for me no i don't deserve how you set me free and even when i've done wrong you still love me and i thank, thank you for, for your grace, grace. and mercy 
Let's talk about your last one. I'm glad you. I'm glad I requested the 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 long version, the live. Yeah. Version. <laughs> I'm not the radio versions are all right, but yeah. I know when God gives you them, they the real the real ones. Those minutes absolutely. Me, I'm a big eater, so I don't like yeah. those snacks. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right. So I yeah. enjoyed the live version. Oh my God, that uh, took you in. Yeah. You know? But even your short version is good for it's good for people too. And we're gonna. Yeah. One. But see, I get special. I get special favor because I that's right. the real one. And I understand a lot of radio people don't want to play the long version, and that's why they miss out on drawing yes. more people. Because Absolutely. if we're in this. But the saving of the souls and ministering to the people. Yeah. Don't worry about your ratings and, and things gotta be paid That's right. And this and that. This this is where it, it separates the wheat from the tears of who's who. That's it. That's See, it. And I'm glad God gave me this way to do my assignment. Yes. You know I, mean? hey. I want the original. It came out Korabasha. Yes, God. So tell us about I'll trust you. <sighs> I trust you came out of a place where um, it seems like I went through so much growing up, which I did, but I trust you came out of a place where I've had enough mm -hmm. and ain't nothing else left for me. I was to the place where um, Bless I'm Lord. sorry. Bless um, Lord. Um, I trust you came out of a place where I didn't know, you know, um, yeah. It was just a pl uh, place, I didn't know what was left of me. 
Mm. Um, as much as I trust God, God gave me song after song. Um, you know, he allowed me to experience stuff all over the world that I, most people never experience. Mm -hmm. And after having wonders and, you know, um, having been blessed with so much that you can't even imagine and you're still not happy. Mm. You know, um, people see you as a worship leader. They see you on stage, see you doing this, but you go home crying, you go home hurt, you go home not healed. And um, people use you, abuse you and call yourself friends and mm. all of the above. And then I get to the place where um, you have nothing, you know, you have absolutely nothing. And you just like God, I'm dead mm. at this moment. What's left? It don't even matter what happens mm. to you at this point. But you still go out, smile because you don't want people in your business. You don't want people to know that you're sleeping on the floor. You don't want people to know that you've lost this and you've lost everything you have. You don't want people to know the part of you that everybody looks at you and think you have it all together. But then when you come home, you don't. And then, you know, then dealing with all the other stuff and then my, dealing with my uh, mother having um, surgery on her spine Mm. And dealing with the pressure of that, dealing with the pandemic, dealing with um, depression, you're dealing with everything you can think of is all weighing heavy on you. And now you're looking at yourself, the older you're getting, it's like, Lord, what is, what's left? What's left? You know, I mean, they say the older you get, the closer you are to seeing Jesus. And then all, at the end of the day, all of that stuff came in and then God gave me the song laying on the floor right before rehearsal. And I was late getting to the rehearsal because the Lord took me into a out of body experience laying beside my bed on the floor. And my parents would tell you, I was the type that you walk in or you walk by the door and you hear me in tongues or you hear me worshiping. That's really who I am. And I'm praying that God help me because I'm at a place where I don't know. Mm -hmm. And then the Lord spoke to me. And the first time I've heard the wind of God mm. speak, you know, and I've heard his voice, but in different ways, but this was different. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, do you love me? Mm. And I was like, truthfully, a lot of people say this. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I said, God, I don't know. That's what I said. I don't know. Now he asked me several times. He said, do you love me? And I said, I don't know. Because when you're at a desperate place, you don't know what your real response really comes out. And some people say, you just talk out of your head. No, I'm talking out of a place where I don't really know. And I was like, God, I don't know. And then the Lord was like, right then and there, he's like, I'm um, he's like, um, just talk to me. Tell me what you feel. And then the lyrics of the song came out. I said, God, I'm waiting patiently for you to bless me now. Cause I'm tired of being out here, seeing everybody pursue and go on, and I'm stuck. I'm tired of being depressed. Everybody's happy. I'm tired of not having and their married children and all this stuff. And here I am depressed by myself, traveling, living life, but can't share it, can't do nothing, come home, still broke. I said, God, bless me now. Lord, now I'm here paralyzed. Yeah. Heal me. Heal me. Let's have a real conversation, God. Heal me. You know, and then he was like, he said, just get it out. And then that's when all of a sudden my complaining turned into, God, I trust you in every way. I trust you. What come, what may, God, I trust you. Yes. And that's where I came in at. But let me tell you, this was a setup from God. I know that. <sighs> I asked you how, what that was all about because I understand exactly what you're saying. Yeah. Quite a bit of that myself. Even yeah. the issue with my mother's spinal. They said at her age, she would not walk again. Yeah. You know, the surgery's going to work, whatever. And when God sent me there, he gave me three things to ask my mother. Because for a whole month, my son was taking care of her, and, he, and, and nobody knew. And when, once my sister found out, my sister said to my son, you better tell your mother. Wow. Because if anything happens to her mother, we yeah. all want to catch heck. Yeah. So he called me and told me, 
for a month. He's been taking care of my mother. She couldn't walk, this and that. The Lord said, ask her, is she ready to go home? Uh -huh. And if not, we're going to work with you. Anoint yeah. her and tell yeah. her she uh -huh. prideful. Yeah, wow. So I went and I did exactly as the Lord said. And my mother said, no, she wasn't ready to go. I said, okay. Yeah. I wanted her. We had communion. I told her she was prideful. She started crying. I said, oh, no. why would I take care of you when you used to wipe yeah. my Yeah, that's right. And I stayed with her in the hospital over two months. Every time the doctors came in with their reports talking about this and this and that, I said, that devil is a liar. That's right. God told me I had right. scriptures playing for her in the hospital as I slept. Yes. The you know, yes. I took the pictures of my mom's transgression you know, her, mm. her, her, and she got strong and strong. My mom's home now. She Look started she walking some, but listen, yeah. she's still here. She's That's still right. Healthy. She's yeah. still full of life. While yeah. the rest of the family talking about, uh, I think she's in dementia, this and that. I said, mm. let me tell y'all something. When right. we can't count her money, then y'all say, what's up? Did you? They're like, I said, let me tell you something. Mommy, mommy's quite well. She, she just, yeah. she's the age six. She doesn't feel like me bothered a whole lot of stuff. That's right. Because you know I mean? she right. always was independent until yeah. then. And then yeah. I, that was during the pandemic. And then wow. when, when it shut down in, in March, June, mm -hmm. God said, pack up and go. And that's why yeah. I did my assignment. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I understand not having things and this and that and being mm -hmm. around people and, and this. I've had to learn. I established boundaries. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. And God shows me who's for me and who's against <laughs> me. Yes. I don't participate with the pimp and the hustling spirit. That was, that, look, that okay. part. That okay. part. <laughs> because I have no problem giving 100% of me. But if you yeah. start coming with the slick woolly movements, the crackhead movements, that's right. Shades of gray, baby. Ain't gonna it's happen. Okay. <laughs> I don't be bothered. Exactly. I guard my heart. Yeah. I don't waste my oil. That's right. That's you right. I mean? And I and I be glad when my man comes to God promise me. <laughs> I understand. But in All the right, meantime, he's coming. But in That's the time, right. I'm yeah. steady building, like God said. Because listen, I to make sure I have plenty of seeds. So when my harvest come in, because I already gave God my description of what He had to be like. All yeah. right, now. In <laughs> order, pick order if I sat down. Yeah. <laughs> but that song, I will trust yeah. you. That's what it was. Is you know, yeah. where I live out here, where well, the population is only one percent. Yeah. Yeah. There's nobody here but me and the Holy Ghost. That's wow. Right. Plenty of conversations. That's right. And, and then I thank God for how he gave me this new medium, how to stay connected with people. Yeah, absolutely. So it keeps me from really being lonely, lonely. Yeah. Yeah. Because I have I have I'm connected so many places this way and trying to establish some things here as I I'm working with some leaders here. Because oh, awesome. they don't accept a believe in prophets here. And they oh. don't believe in apostles. They don't have wow. that many women in ministry here. So like I said, I live in a foreign land. Yeah, absolutely. Like God gave me your Abraham journey to Texas, he sent me. That's to right. Texas. Yes. We're on assignment. We're living in a time where we need God. So many people are confused and they're lost. But I just want to tell you to hold on. God, if there's nothing left, know that I trust you. I am way deep patiently. Oh, God, please bless me now. Oh, trust you. Keep holding on, trust you. For I know you're strong, I will trust you, God. For I am waiting patiently. To heal you now, 
For I've learned to trust and will keep holding on. For we know you're strong. For they that wait upon the Lord shall he renew your strength. Come on, everybody. of doing for 2023 well we're working on um hopefully i'm trying to get a um tour started um towards the end of um well the fall season to a uh, winter we're trying to get a tour started and i'm working on the project trying to also complete this new project that i have Ooh. coming and i'm excited about that it's been a long time but wow. i'm really excited um but i have um quite a um quite a bit going on. We just opened um, an online clothing store for my mother. I wanted her to have oh, something here, so I was excited about that. Amen. Yes. And, and what's um, the name of her online clothing store? It's um, touchofgrace.vip. Okay, I gotta go check that yeah. out. Yeah, please do. Please do. Is it for the voluptuous women to go on? And it yeah. is. <laughs> and it is. Is it? Is yes, it? and so... And then I'm working on a book as well. I'm trying okay. to get um, my book out, out, If These Eyes Could Talk. I talk mm. on this. Uh, I it's like that title. about my life mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the journey that God has um, given me on. And it's in seasons instead of chapters. Amen. And I was like, so it was a long chapter, long season. But yeah. um, and then so, yeah, I got a few other things that I'm working on that I'm trying to um, you know, establish for the new year, Amen. Um, for next year. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Tremaine, I want to thank you for coming on to Joshua's House for Christian Artists, where we celebrate our Christian lifestyle, because ain't nothing dead up in here. And I know we celebrate right. the many hidden treasures all around us. You truly are yeah. a treasure. 
Thank I you. thank you so much. And um, when you do your next um, album, you know where you have to make sure I get my copy so I can bring yeah. it back. I promise you I will, and God bless you. Thank you so much. You're very welcome, because trust me, if um, I don't hear from you, trust me, I know how to reach out. <laughs> I know that's right. <laughs> All right, Jemay, thank you so much, and God thank bless you. you God bless you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Give you glory, God. We give you honor, Jesus. 